Hello and welcome back. I'm Amy Sonneman and today I'd like to share with you ways to use ink and matching paper along with your stencils to allow you to get more use out of the stencils you have in your collection. So let's get started. A lot of the companies now are coming out with ink pads that have matching paper and it's great for card making and stamping, but it's also great for stenciling too. So I'm gonna show you today a little bit about how to use your ink pad with a stencil and the matching paper to create beautiful backgrounds, to create your own patterned paper, and just gonna give you ideas for using your stencils in a new way. Like in the other videos, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tape our stencil to our paper so that when we start stenciling, there's no movement, there's no shifting, and you're happy with the outcome because it hasn't shifted during use. This is the Lawn Fawn Sunflower paper as well as the Sunflower ink. So by using matching ink and matching paper, you can get a beautiful tone-on-tone -tone effect when you blend with the ink. We're gonna use the domed blending tool. We're gonna load the color. Don't forget the magnets. We're gonna put those down so it doesn't slide around while you're using it. We're gonna take the ink to the paper. And you can already see what it's doing. You can go light to dark, dark to light. I'm gonna make this a sunrise. So I'm gonna make it really, really dark where the sun is coming up. And then we're gonna get lighter as the rays go further into the distance. So if you have matching paper and ink pads, this is a great way to get more use out of them and just have fun playing. I do a bunch of different um, kind of backgrounds all at once. Like I get all my stencils out and I get my inks and then I just play and I sometimes I set them aside and it might be weeks before I get back to them, but I have a whole selection of fun backgrounds that I can use later on for cards or whatever. So we're gonna go ahead and lift that up. You can see I started dark here and I kind of went lighter as the rays go out. The big reveal, tone on tone. Now if we wanna go back in and add another color, we can go back in and add orange. Let's put the stencil back down because we had it hinged. This time we're gonna go back in with fake tan, which is a more of an orange color. We still we put the magnets back on. We still have it taped down because it was hinged. It, it didn't shift or move. So this is gonna give you an even darker base at the bottom where the sun would shine from the horizon line. Gives you a totally different look. You can do tone on tone or you can kick it up a notch and create an even brighter sunrise. Look at that. So pretty. So you could easily do a silhouette and stencil something dark on the bottom and then have this be in the background. Tons of options, lots of things that you can do with it. So I highly encourage you to play around with the different tone on tones. The other thing you can do is create a dot background with a fun stencil. You can create this ombre background with the tiny squares. Here's another one with the squares. This it took a lot of time to do the rainbow because you have to mask off each of the pieces. I started with the orange and worked down and you have to mask what's below it. So it did take time, but the outcome was beautiful. Now you can see right here where I didn't clean my stencil from one color to the next and it dragged a little bit of the green into the yellow. So you kind of have to be careful with that as well. That's with the Moroccan tiles. You can also create fun, I think this is kind of a masculine background. Love the different shades of green or teal. Look how pretty that is. The stencil is just beautiful. But you can also turn it on its side at an angle. And this is tone on tone, it's a gray paper with I think it's fog, if I'm not mistaken, ink. So after I did the rain in a gray, I found this hidden gem, it's from Zig, and it's the Wink of Stella pen, but it's a fine tipped pen. So I took this fine tipped pen and I went in over the top 
of where I had stenciled because I just wanted a little bit of glitter to kind of show through. And I absolutely loved how it looked. It didn't, it wasn't like bam glitter in your face. It's just a hint of glitter, but it control, you can really control where you put your glitter on your paper. And it just adds a little bit extra to your stenciled pieces. And I'm not sure you can see that. So in the light, you can kind of see as it shifts. I hope you can see that on film, but I really do like this Wink of Stella pen. The next item I want to share is using pigment ink to get beautiful metallic looking backgrounds. But I want to show you first what not to do, and then I want to show you how to do it so that you aren't disappointed in the end. This is the Vicki Booten color wheel, and it's got all these beautiful metallic colors. And I wanted to use this beautiful kind of coppery color. And at first I thought, oh, let's just go ahead and remove it and like dab and smush the ink through the stencil like this. Well, I don't recommend that because if you notice it, when you smush ink in, it bleeds underneath the stencil itself. So you have to kind of have a softer hand and you really need to use a tool to make it more even. So I am totally about showing you the flaws and what not to do. If you can see how it's not a perfect square, it kind of blobs and, and so forth. So that's what happens when you just kind of smush it in and get too much ink and it seeps underneath your stencil. So I tried that a few times and I got it down. So now I'm gonna share that with you. I took my blending tool, I put on a new foam, and instead of taking this out and taking it directly to the paper, I just loaded my blending tool and I tapped. And as you can see, a lot is getting on the stencil itself, but it doesn't necessarily be, seem to be getting into the paper or onto the paper. But what I wanna do now is once I've dabbed it on, get a nice coating, then you're gonna swirl. And it's gonna take all of the ink that's on the stencil and it's gonna push it onto the paper. But be gentle, don't like smush and be really heavy handed because that's the problem I had before is I was too heavy handed and I pushed the excess under the stencil because it's the, the pigment ink is really wet and juicy and thick where a dye based ink is not. So you don't necessarily have that problem with dye ink, but you will totally have that problem with this type of ink bleeding underneath. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. And it totally makes a difference. This is where you put it on top and gently pushed it through. Here's where it kind of blobs. I smushed it and it blobbed through. Big difference, but totally beautiful effect. You can use all the beautiful colors. You can do an ombre of silver to gold to copper. It would be absolutely beautiful. So if you have pigment inks of any kind, try that at home. Just be gentle. I hope that gave you a few ideas for using your stencils in a new way and allowed you to use your inks and the paper that are matching to kind of create fun backgrounds and patterned paper. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more from scrapbook.com, please like, share, subscribe, and leave a message. Happiness is life handmade.